that cabinet. The one where you keep all your over-the-counter medications for the things that just happen in life. It has two medications that have to be safe because they are so common. And they live right next to your band-aids. Well, think again, because they actually have things in them that can kill your memory. I'll list both medications, why they're bad for your brain, and what you should do instead. So let's talk about these memory killing medications. But I already know what you're thinking. I'm pretty darn healthy. I rarely even use over-the-counter medications. They're probably in everybody else's medicine cabinet and not in mine. So here are some problems that everyday people have in life and reasons why you likely have those medications too. A couple of years ago, my significant other and I did a scavenger hunt around Portland. It was awesome. We're jogging around and finding things and taking pictures for proof. It was wonderful. Near the end of almost 15 miles of doing this, the last little challenge was to find a park and do some cartwheels in it. <laughs> so we are there, we are taping ourselves, we're doing an awesome job, it was great. Then right afterwards, Jeff's body starts reacting. His face turns red, his whole half of body turns red, he starts getting all puffy, and he's not comfortable. <laughs> we tried dousing him with water, but what we really needed was an antihistamine. Benadryl saved the day. In that case, Benadryl, or diphenhydramine, was blocking the histamines that were causing this allergic reaction. It worked great! Histamines are also a part of keeping you awake. So when Benadryl is taken at night, you can get sleepier and have a better night of sleep. It seems like a really useful solution when you just need a quick fix. But here's the problem. Benadryl does not just block histamines. It also blocks acetylcholine, which is an important neurotransmitter. Now, if you have allergies or even a common cold and you get those itchy eyes and runny nose and all those things that you want to dry up, blocking acetylcholine is a great idea. It makes those symptoms go away. But it's also blocking other things. What else does acetylcholine do? It facilitates memory, learning, and attention. We need it to have better brain functioning. In fact, some of the medications that are approved for Alzheimer's disease work on this system so that we have more acetylcholine available and it can make our brain work better. When we use Benadryl, we are getting rid of that important neurotransmitter and it's bad for our brain, especially as we get older. So if you want to deal with allergies or symptoms that are related to them and you don't want to hurt your brain, then choose some of the newer antihistamines like Claritin, Zyrtec, or Allegra. They're lower on the scale of impacting acetylcholine and therefore a bit safer. So what's the other life problem we've all had to deal with? Pain. Cruddy, frustrating, irritating, debilitating, burning, stabbing. Pain is the worst. Whether it comes from ridiculous injuries like running into the wall or stepping on a Lego or smashing your finger in something, or from the long-term things that creep up on us over time like arthritis or the zillions of other reasons why our brain can send pain signals to our body. Pain makes it hard to live and it makes it hard to sleep. So what do people do? Well, when it comes to dealing with pain, especially short-term pain, and you really just want to stop the pain so you can sleep better, people usually go with the easy fix. Here comes Tylenol PM or Motrin PM or any of those pain reliever slash PM kind of combinations. Seems like an easy solution that could work reasonably well. It's the same idea when you have a cold and you want to sleep at night. Here comes NyQuil. Seems like it's a good idea. Solve the cold and the pain and get to sleep. Voila! But here's the problem. The PM part of those medications means that something's been added in to make you kind of sleepy. And you've guessed it, it's often an antihistamine like the ones we've already talked about that are so bad for your brain. So no, these are not good options for dealing with pain and helping you sleep 
if you want to keep your memory sharp. So what should you do instead? Well, let's proactively manage your pain and your sleep. They're both important. Yes, medications might be a part of that strategy, but a holistic approach to managing both pain and sleep makes such a difference and works so much better. While you might try the over-the-counter pain medications, not the ones with the PM part associated, but sooner or later, if the pain keeps on recurring, you're probably going to realize this isn't a long-term fix. When you get to that point, yes, talk to your providers about it. And ultimately, if they need to, they can even refer you to a holistic pain management center. Same thing for sleep. Most of our population has sleep problems, whether they're new or short term or just kind of irritating or the chronic, I've never been a good sleeper kind of sleep problems. Using over the counter PM types of medications to help us sleep is really not a good solution to the problem. Let's talk to our providers about all the different options that are available to improve our sleep. And I'll even throw in a free handout below in the description that you can click on and get some good ideas. So now you know two of these super memory killing over the counter pills to avoid. But you might also have some prescription medications that are causing problems. Watch this video for the rundown on those. Thanks so much for coming. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.